So fall is the season where you find squash in everything, whether it's pumpkin and lattes, pumpkin and bread, pumpkin and muffin, pumpkin and scones, or butternut squash in things like my pot pie. Well, today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different where instead of putting squash into something, I'm gonna put something into a squash. So I'm gonna show you how I make a delicious porcini mushroom risotto, and I'm gonna be stuffing that inside of a balsamic glazed acorn squash. So come along with me while I show you how to make this. It's a bit labor intensive, but it's definitely worth the wait. So every great risotto starts with a great quality stock. So I'm gonna be making my own today. What I have pre-chopped in here is about one onion, two carrots, three celery stalks, and because I had some fennel left over from the pot pie recipe that I made, I just went ahead and threw that in there. So in my Instant Pot, I have eight cups of filtered water, and I'm just going to pour these roughly chopped vegetables, making a pretty decent mess, uh, directly into the Instant Pot. Now I'm choosing to make it in the Instant Pot so it goes a little bit faster. It would probably take about an hour on the stove top to do this. Uh, I'm gonna be using my favorite flavoring here. Yes, I'm making a vegetable, stock, but by adding a bit of this better than bouillon chicken flavor, this is gonna be my salt, and I'm adding just about one tablespoon's worth for the eight cups of water. And I'll be tasting it for seasoning after it's all finished. I'm gonna stir, make sure everything is in the water. Plug in the Instant Pot. Using the soup function, which automatically goes to 30 minutes, I'm going to lock it. Let it go and uh, I will just be doing a quick release when that 30 minutes is up. All right, so the first thing I wanna do for my butternut squash is to preheat my oven to 400 degrees. I'm just gonna be using the smart oven today so I don't have to heat up the whole kitchen, but um, obviously any oven will work. And these are gonna be cooking for about 45 minutes, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start this time for an hour so I don't have to worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna be slicing this butternut squash in half. Uh, it can be a little bit tough, so make sure you have a pretty sharp knife. Uh, I'm just starting on one side, going down to the bottom, and then down the other side. And then all the way through. So you just want to remove the seeds from both halves. I'm just using a measuring spoon to do that. want to clean it out and that space although it's not very large uh, is where our risotto is going to go so once you have the seeds removed from both halves you're going to want to score the squash this is to give some edges to add a little bit of brown and also it is going to allow for the juices to seep into it when we add the balsamic vinegar. I'm not going too deep as you can see here, just a little bit of a score. And do be careful with this, it isn't exactly the easiest thing to cut. Make sure your knife is sharp uh, and then you're watching where your fingers are because you don't want to slip and slice yourself. So they're just about like three quarter inch cubes cut into the squash. So I'm gonna be baking these acorn squashes in this eight by eight baking dish. Uh, if you notice, the bottoms of the squash aren't level. So I'm gonna be creating a little collar here with some aluminum foil just to help them stand more level. So I've got about a four inch strip here and I'm folding it in half and then in half again, just to make a ring. And this is just so the squash can set in it and sit more level in the pan. All right, so I'm gonna season up these squash before I put them in the oven. Starting out with just some balsamic vinegar. Just gonna drizzle a bit of that on each one. And then with just a brush, brush it in again so it gets in all those cracks that I made. This is gonna caramelize up really nice as this bakes in the oven. And this is why you wanted those cuts in there, just so it seeps in and it's not just gonna be on the surface. Adding just a little bit of olive oil as well help it brown up a bit. And then lastly, just some salt and pepper. So 
So I'm just gonna be baking these at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. All right, so we took about a 30 minute break here to wait for the stock to cook and to let the butternut, or excuse me, the uh, acorn squash cook because we couldn't make the risotto until the stock is done. Uh, obviously, if you wanted to use store-bought stock, you wouldn't have to wait this amount of time or you could make it the night before or the day before, but uh, the Instant Pot just went off, so I'm gonna do a quick release, strain out the vegetables, and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So, uh, time is off, gonna unplug it here and turn this to do the quick release. Again, you could do this on a stove top uh, if you wanted. It'd take about an hour probably to make the same vegetable stock. Uh, just put a lid on it so that not too much water would evaporate because we should in the end still have about eight cups of stock to get ready to go. All right, so the pressure is all released. Let's open it up and see how she looks. All right, so what I wanna do next is just strain out all the big vegetables. And if you can see, you see here, I have a colander in a bowl to catch any liquid that drips out so I don't waste any. Now, the vegetables that you have here, there's still a bit of flavor in them. You could make a soup, puree it in a blender and you'd have like sort of a vegetable cream soup. Um, if you garden, you could compost this obviously. Um, just don't throw it away. There's still a lot of flavor and fiber left in these vegetables. So the squash has been in for just over 40 minutes. Um, I did rotate the pan halfway through cooking and I'm just gonna baste this again with the juices that are left in here. And I'm gonna test it with a fork to see how close we are to done. You can see the lines that I cut in there have really opened up nicely and a lot of that extra liquid has absorbed. So I'm still a little bit firm here, even though we have some nice brown. So it looks like it needs to go in for at least about maybe 10 more minutes or so. So let's put it back in. So for this risotto, I'm gonna need about six cups of the stock. So I'm gonna start to measure out those six cups right now. So this thing holds about four cups. As you can see that lovely golden color. Some of that is from the better than bouillon, but most of it's just from the vegetables, especially the onion and the carrot also. Two more cups. And if you notice, I'm straining it again, just in case there are some chunks that I didn't get. So as I said, one of the key ingredients for the risotto is the stock. And you wanna make sure that it has a lot of flavor because it's going to give the flavor to your entire rice dish. So I'm gonna taste this broth now to see how the flavor is. Needs a little bit more salt. Remember, this is gonna concentrate, it's gonna evaporate a little bit, but it's also having to season a cup and a half of rice. So I'm gonna add a little bit more salt here just to bring up the flavor so that when it goes into the risotto, I won't have to add too much more. All right, and since this is a porcini mushroom risotto that we're making, we're going to be using dry porcini mushrooms. I have about a half ounce in here, and I'm going to be rehydrating these in the same stock that I'll be using for the risotto. So I'm just gonna dump these in here, and these need to sit for maybe about 10 or so minutes in this. Uh, what's gonna happen is they're gonna rehydrate, they're gonna flavor the broth, and then we're gonna take them out, chop them into really small pieces, and we're gonna add them actually towards the end of the cooking of the risotto. Now, if you're cooking for somebody that doesn't like mushrooms, uh, they're not gonna be eating big chunks of mushrooms. They're gonna be really small, uh, just small little chewy bits in there to add just some sort of variation to the texture so it's not just all creamy risotto. So it gives a little bit of a tooth and uh, just a really nice depth of flavor, really strong umami that'll penetrate the entire dish. So let's put a lid on here and let it set, like I said, for about 10 minutes. And while it does that, we can get started on the next step.
All right, so we're over here at the stove top and I have three things that are gonna be happening. Uh, this is the pot that I'm gonna be using to make my risotto and I'll be turning that on, on starting to saute things in just a moment. Back here we have the stock that I made with the mushrooms that are hydrating. Uh, as soon as those mushrooms are hydrated and I take them out, I'm gonna be putting the stock on about medium, medium low heat just to keep it warm. It's important that when you use this stock in your risotto that it is warm so it doesn't shock the rice and it just keeps the cooking process even and everything goes smoothly. Uh, over here in this pan is where I'm going to be putting my balsamic vinegar that I'm going to be using to make the reduction. I'm going to add just about three quarters of a cup of the balsamic vinegar here, turn it on to medium low heat, stirring it occasionally. And uh, by the time the risotto is done, we should have a nice thick syrupy paste that we can use to put over the entire dish. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the pot's on medium heat. I'm adding about two tablespoons of olive oil to the pan or pot. And then I'm adding, this is just about a half of an onion chopped up. This is going directly in here. This is gonna saute for a little bit. You don't wanna add any color to your onion. You're just trying to sweat it down a little bit and get it to be slightly translucent. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of salt right now too, so that I'm seasoning each ingredient. That way it builds the flavor and you don't just get a salty bit at the end. And this is gonna take probably about five minutes. All right, so I'm turning the other pan for the balsamic reduction onto just about medium low. And I'm adding, let's make it a little easier for myself, set about three quarters of a cup in here, maybe a bit more, maybe closer to a cup. And this is just gonna sit on medium low heat. I'm gonna be stirring it occasionally. We're just trying to reduce it down quite a bit, uh, definitely at least half, maybe even a little bit more. And while I'm stirring the risotto, which is a constant stirring process, I'll be just attending to this and scraping down the sides and making sure nothing is burning. So just waiting for this to get translucent. Once it starts to get clear on me, I'm gonna add the rice and then uh, the next ingredients. All right, actually, this is a good time for me to check the butternut, excuse me, I keep calling it butternut squash. Uh, check the acorn squash and see how it's doing. I'll grab a fork here. It's still a little bit tough. Um, we're at about 50 minutes at this point. So I actually think maybe another 10 more minutes will be okay. So we'll probably be just a little bit over an hour by the time this is done. All right, so the vinegar is simmering away. My onions are just about done here. Uh, again, you don't want any color at all. You don't want them to brown and they're pretty liberally coated with the oil. And that's because when I add the rice now, you want the rice to as well be coated with oil. Now this is our boreal rice. It's a very starchy rice. Uh, you don't just wanna use any old rice to do this. Make sure it is our boreal rice. Uh, the thing about this is, is it is going to be spitting out starch as it absorbs the liquid. So it'll take liquid in to hydrate the rice, but it'll also spit, uh, spit starch out so that it thickens up the liquid that the rice is in. Um, as you can see here, it's actually a little bit dry, so I'm gonna add just a bit more olive oil. You want to coat every single grain of rice with that oil. And again, we're not wanting to brown the rice at all. We're just trying to get it slightly translucent and it should take just a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm choosing to stir this. I don't, again, I just don't want anything to burn. Brown is not gonna be our friend with this particular dish. With the balsamic here, you can see there's quite a bit of steam coming off and I'm just gonna be scraping down the edges, stirring it, and just letting it evaporate. So the rice, uh, when you look at it here, you can still see sort of a, a white core but the edges of the rice, each end, sort of has an opaqueness to it. So this is the time when I'm going to be adding the next ingredient, which is going to be white wine. Now you need about half cup of dry white wine. I'm using Chardonnay here. Uh, we don't really use much wine here in the house, so I just buy these little bottles. They come in sets of four. They can sit in the cupboard and you have them on hand when you need them. And it's better than having to open up a whole bottle. So I just added that half cup of wine in here and I'm stirring it around here a nice sizzle and we're just gonna wait for that wine to completely cook down and evaporate out before we start adding our stock 
So this is the time now where I'm gonna start to take out the mushrooms, just gonna put them in a bowl to the side. I can deal with those in a bit. And then I'm also gonna be turning the stock up to probably about a medium heat so that it's nice and warm when it's time to add into the risotto. I'm just gonna put these in a bowl on the side. They're not fully, fully hydrated. I probably could have let them go a little bit longer, but I need to stock now. All right, so I've, I've got the mushrooms out. The wine is pretty much fully evaporated and I'm gonna start adding my stock into the rice. So I'm gonna start out with a full cup, maybe even a cup and a half. The stock is still pretty hot. And as I add it, see that the temperature is still remaining the same as it goes into the pot. It's still kind of at a simmer. And at this time, I'm going to set my timer for exactly 18 minutes. And basically, I'm gonna just continue to stir. Uh, it's said to stir in the same direction the entire time. If you get bored with one direction, you can switch it up. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you're just gonna continue to stir this, monitoring it, making sure it's not bubbling too much. And as it begins to cook down, once it starts to look like it's getting pretty dry, it's time for you to add another half cup of stock. And you're just gonna continue to do this. Stir, let it reduce, add stock, stir, let it reduce. Um, you're gonna go through pretty much all six cups of your stock over the next 18 minutes. Uh, and at the end of those 18 minutes, we're gonna come back or I'll talk to you again and we'll test it out and see if we need some more time or if we're done. All right, so it's been going for about three minutes, two and a half minutes, and you can see that most of that original cup and a half of stock is gone. So I'm going to add just about another half cup to a cup of stock now and continue to stir. I'm constantly gonna be adjusting the temperature also, uh, somewhere between medium and medium low. I don't want it to bubble up too much so that it's spitting everywhere, uh, but I also want some movement. I don't want it just completely stagnant in here. So I'm constantly adjusting it between, like I said, medium and medium low. Um, I have a second that I can step away and I'm gonna use this time right now to pull the butternut squash, acorn squash out and see how it looks. So when I put my fork in, you can see that it goes in, comes out, little resistance. Uh, I don't want it too mushy. I still want a bit of a body to the squash. So it's done and I'm just gonna let this set aside while I finish. All right, so my balsamic reduction is done here. So I'm gonna take a second from stirring, not more than a second, um, and show you, you can see that it's quite reduced. And when you move a, well, I have a rubber spatula here, across the surface, you can see that it's quite thick and reduced. So I'm just gonna move this into a bowl and let it cool down a bit. It'll also thicken quite a bit as it cools. back to stirring. So we're about five minutes left here on the time and I'm gonna add a bit more broth. And I'd say I'm adding about three quarters of a cup every time I've been adding liquid. Uh, half cup just seems like a little bit of a too small amount of cup feeling too much so three quarters of a cup, about give or take. So uh, just continuing to stir. This is definitely a labor of love, um, something to practice and perfect and to show off once you've mastered it. But it takes time and it's a great way to show somebody you love them. All right, so I have about 30 seconds left on my time. If you look at the risotto here, you can see it's thickened up. It's almost a sort of porridge consistency. 
Um, as soon as this time is up, I'm gonna taste it, see how the texture of the rice is, check for salt, uh, and then I'm going to quickly chop up my mushrooms, uh, add a little bit of vegan butter, put a lid on and let it set for two minutes just for everything to come together. All right, so time is up. I'm gonna turn it off and I'm just gonna taste it for doneness and salt. That broth is so good. Um, I'm gonna add just a little bit more salt um, just to make sure that it is fully flavored. And I'm gonna add some cracked black, black pepper as well. Now these mushrooms that I've had aside, I'm just gonna throw them on a cutting board and chop them into tiny little bits. All right, so I'm gonna add the mushrooms in. And remember, these have soaked up all the broth flavor. They've got a nice chew, perfect for texture. I'm adding in just about two tablespoons of Miyoko's vegan butter. And then just so that it doesn't dry up too much on me, I'm gonna add just maybe about a quarter cup more of broth. I'm gonna stir this together. And then I'm gonna put a lid on it and let it set for about exactly two minutes. All right, so two minutes is up. There we go. I'm also gonna be adding just a little bit of fresh Italian parsley, just to add some green to freshen it up a little bit. And I'm gonna be adding a tablespoonful of nutritional yeast because we're making this vegan. There's no Parmesan cheese. So this is gonna add just a bit of a cheesy flavor um, to the dish. So stir that all together. Perfect consistency here. As you can see, you can still see the individual grains of rice, but we have a nice creamy texture. It's holding everything together. You don't want this too thin since we're gonna be plating it in these squashes. You don't want it to be running all over. You want it to have just a little bit of body. All right, so I'm gonna be plating this on a plate. So I'm gonna start with just a bit of the risotto on the plate to help me stand up my squash. Because you don't really wanna plate it with the tin foil. And just that little bit of risotto helps it to stand up. using my favorite plastic ladle. And we're just gonna fill this up. It's okay if it overflows a little bit onto the sides of the squash. The vessel's not that big and definitely you want the risotto to be the star. Have my reduction here. Hasn't had time to cool off too much. Could be reduced slightly a, a little bit more, but I'm just gonna go ahead and drizzle it over the top of our risotto and our squash. And that's gonna add a nice little sweetness and acidity to balance out the creaminess of the risotto. Final touch, a little bit more fresh parsley on top. And there we have a balsamic roasted acorn squash with a porcini mushroom risotto and balsamic reduction. So this was a labor intensive dish, but definitely a labor of love. Took some time, but I do think it is worth it. So there are some shortcuts. If you wanted to use a store-bought stock, that would save you a bit of time. If you didn't want to put it inside of the acorn squash, that would take you, save you some time also because you wouldn't have to bake that. And risotto, I know there are some recipes online to make a risotto in a pressure cooker in about six minutes. So you have some opportunities to make it a little bit shorter, but uh, I definitely think the way that I've showed you how to do it is the best way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and give this dish a taste. Um, as you can see, it's piled high, all this fresh parsley on top here. Um, and let's see how the squash is as we peel it back and take a bite of it with 
V Risotto. I'm so excited for this. I've actually impressed myself. You get the acidity and the sweetness from that balsamic vinegar, both in the squash and in the drizzle on top. The creamy richness of that risotto is so hearty and just the way that the acidity of everything else cuts it. Uh, also, the, I hate to say it, the grassiness of that parsley is really important as well, just kind of grounding it out. Um, wow. I'm really happy with this. So give this a try. Again, there's lots of variations you can do with this. You can do it with other types of squash. You can do risotto with anything else if you didn't like the mushrooms, but uh, this is incredible. So give this a try. Um, if you have leftover risotto also, you can make arancini, which are risotto balls. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, at Munson Made This, you'll probably see in the next couple days that I will be posting pictures of what I'm doing with the leftover risotto. Also the vegetables that we use for the squash, I said you could make that into a soup. Also expect some pictures of the soup that I'll be making with that. So give this a try, subscribe, like this video, leave comments below if you try it. Also tag me on Instagram, hashtag Munson made this if you try any of my dishes. And uh, I will see you next Monday.